I'm going to show you a trick on how to use 3D geometry to create some nice displacement and opacity maps for objects like wire mesh or expanded metal, like in these reference images. Alright, let's go to 3D Max and start by setting up our background image. I'm going to use this one. Right now we need to model this uh, geometry. I'm going to create the plane first. And now I'm going to turn on the snap and make a V-shape like this. Okay, shift plus move to the right to make an instance. And make another instance by moving upwards. And this time move to the right as well. Let's match this perfectly. And we can get rid of the plane. Right, maybe let's move this down a bit. Okay, so now we need to adjust this element to fit the shape of our reference image. I'm gonna add a couple of more vertices here. And go to perspective view to see what's going on here. Alright, so this part should be moved back. This part should be moved out. And this one should be moved to the front. something a lot like this. We can check from the top view to see if it fits, fits together well. Okay, and let's give a radial profile to the line. I think it looks fine. change the profile to rectangular and add a turbo smooth modifier. Okay, so looks like we need to move some vertices a bit more. I think this is fine. All right. Let's delete these upper ones. Actually, let's freeze them in place. Okay. Delete Turbo Smooth. Turn off the profile and freeze these ones. And let's convert the lower ones to editable splines. All right now, we can attach them together. Well, these vertices here, set everything to corner, and shift plus move to the right to make another copy. 
Okay, attach together. And weld these vertices. Right, now make a copy upward. Actually, let's copy the element. Get rid of the background so we can see better. Turn on the profile and that turbo smooth. Let's copy up again. Make a copy and I think we're finished with the modeling part. Now we need to render out a z-depth image. So first I'm gonna create a standard camera. Select the camera and the target and make sure they are aligned vertically. And now let's set up our rendering settings. Assign V-Ray as your renderer. Turn on the frame buffer. And go to Render Elements tab. We need to add V-Ray Z-Depth element. Okay. Now when we render, you'll notice here you can choose between RGB color, alpha and Z-Depth. So right now the Z-Depth looks pretty flat and gray. We can fix that by adjusting our minimum and maximum values of Z-Depth. So let's measure the values. Use the tape tool and measure the distance to the mesh. So it's about 295, okay, 294, and measure the distance to the end of the mesh. And that's 327. So enter these values here in the V-Ray Z-Def parameters. And now when you re-render your image, you will notice a much more pronounced effect here. So you can see that it doesn't render correctly. The center is much brighter than the sides and that's because it's taking into account the camera distortion. So select your camera and change it to orthographic. This should fix this. And if you re-render you will see that it renders perfectly. Now let's increase the resolution I'm going to try 3000 pixels on the long edge and re-render. So now we can save this image and make a tileable texture from it. I'm going to save it as a PNG file and make sure you check the alpha channel. Right, go to Photoshop and open it up. So here it is. Now we need to make a selection to create a tileable element. So we're going to tile it from this little corner here. And just like this. If 
if I've made the selection correctly, this part should be tileable. And copy it, create a new file and paste. You can test the tiling by using the offset, offset filter. Right, and there's a little problem horizontally. And it tiles vertically pretty good. Let's switch back. And deselect like this. And let's deselect another pixel on the right side as well. Copy, create new image, paste, and let's try the offset filter again. And this time it tiles perfectly, well, almost perfectly, good enough for our, our needs. Okay, so it looks good. Let's increase the contrast. background layer medium gray and let's save it so this is going to be our bump map and to create the opacity map we need to make our background completely black so it becomes invisible and we need to make our upper layer completely white so it remains visible. Okay, so let's go to 3D Max. And here's a simple scene I'm going to demonstrate this material in. So as you can see, there's a extrude its spline. It's a simple flat geometry and I'm gonna change it into a wire mesh fence by using a material. Let's create a new gear material and set up the opacity first. Here's the opacity map. Let's increase the tiling, maybe something like 100 by 50, looks okay, maybe a bit less, 100 by 40, right? And copy the opacity map to the bump slot as well. And here we're going to change the bitmap to this one. And I would probably use a pretty high value here, maybe even 200. And let's reduce the blurring a bit. Oh, actually, let's reduce it to zero. Okay, so that's the basic setup for the opacity and bump. And when we render, you can see it already looks pretty good. I'm gonna go closer so you can see the details better. Let's go right up to the mesh and re-render. So this works pretty well and you don't need to model the entire fence. You can use a simple material so from, from further away it will look pretty good. So to make it a bit more realistic, let's change the basic material to a metal. So a dark diffuse color, some pretty intense reflections. Let's blur them a bit and enable Fresnel with a very high value like 80. So that's a basic metal material and with the wire mesh opacity and bump. Let's re-render. So 
So it works pretty well. But I've probably clipped my white levels a bit too much. You can see it here. Let's retry that. Okay, I'm gonna resave this image. Okay, let's re-render this small region here. This should work a bit better. And you can see the clipping is gone and it works much better. Maybe let's increase the bump to 300 to make the effect stronger. I think that's pretty nice. You can change the base material to, for example, painted painted color, for example, let's paint our our mesh red uh, with the shiny paint. Let's see how that looks. So the base material doesn't really matter as long as you have the opacity map and the bump map set up correctly. Alright, so that's it for the wire mesh. And you can use the same technique for expanded metal or some different patterns and it should work the same way.